Okay. All right, questions on that? All right, last thing in the last few minutes. We're going to give one tied together example. This protein is going to be regulated in several different ways to illustrate that proteins can be regulated in multiple fashions, each with particular effects. And what this is, is something called So here's our example. This protein is one of a family of what's called the cyclin-dependent kinases, or CDKs. Now we'll see what cyclin is, but it tells you something. It tells you that the activity of these kinases must depend on having something called cyclin, which is a protein, we'll see that in a minute, present. Now what do the CDKs do? There's several different kinds. One of their major functions is to regulate is to regulate what's known as the cell cycle. The cycle from one mitosis to the next. Now you probably recall you have mitosis and then you have interphase, the period between mitosis. And most of the time, even an actively dividing cell spends only a few percent of its time undergoing mitosis and the rest of the time in interphase. But what you might not know is that there are several different periods in interphase. One period is where the cell has normal metabolism. Another period, in fact, I'll kind of draw this stuff high diagram here. You have mitosis, and as you're going through this cycle, then after mitosis, you go into something called the G1 phase. The G1 phase of where cell, which is most of the cell cycle, is when the cell is doing its normal metabolism. And then, before mitosis happens, you have what's called the S phase, which is where you replicate the DNA. In other words, you copy the DNA prior to mitosis, and last but not least is something called the G2 phase. And the G2 phase is sort of getting ready for mitosis. So during the G2 phase, you're getting everything in order, getting all your ducks in a row. You're checking and making sure everything's right before you give the order to initiate mitosis. Okay, so that's the cell cycle. It turns out what regulates the cell cycle? the cell cycle are regulated by different combinations of these cyclin proteins and these CDKs or cyclin dependent kinases. Each part of the cell cycle is controlled by certain cyclin CDK combinations. There's a couple kind that handle the G1, there's a couple kind that initiate DNA replication in S phase, there's one or two in G2, and what we're going to focus on for regulation is we're going to look at the one that actually initiates mitosis. So let's look at the one that starts off the events of mitosis and literally leads to prophase. <laughs> and that's a combination of what's known as CDK1 and a cycling called cyclin B. Now let's take a look at this guy. This, when it's active, that CDK1 is the very thing that triggers off prophase and mitosis. Because when it's active, it phosphorylates proteins in the chromatin that cause the chromosomes to condense, making those visible mitotic chromosomes. It phosphorylates proteins associated with the nuclear membrane, causing it to fragment, so the nuclear membrane disappears. And it phosphorylates proteins in what's called the centrosomes, causing the cytoskeletal microtubule network to collapse and then reassemble to form the mitotic spindle. Those are the three things you see in prophase. Nuclear membrane disappears, actually fragments. The chromosomes compact into mitotic chromosomes, and 
the mitotic spindle forms. That's what you find at the beginning of mitosis. And what does that is this active cyclin CDK1 combination. So this is literally the trigger for mitosis. So let's see how this guy's regulated. Because of the vast importance, we know this in a great amount of detail. So we start out here. With the CDK. The CDK happens to have an inhibitory phosphate right in the active site where the ATP binds. So when you have that in there, the ATP, it does bind, but it's not in the right position. So it's inactive at this point. And it has that inhibitory phosphate. Now what we're going to do is add this other protein called the cyclin. Because all CDKs require the appropriate cyclin to bind it. This is a non-covalent binding of a regulatory protein. And when that binds, it warps the protein a little bit, plays around a bit with the active site. But this is still inactive. We're not done yet. Part of it is that inhibitory phosphate in the active site that pushes the ATP at the bottom of the active site out of the way so it can't really do anything. Now we have to have a third thing, so. Now the third thing, we're going to call out a specific phosphatase to get rid of that phosphate. Phosphate, but lo and behold, it's still inactive. We got to do one final thing with this guy. So here we have a phosphorylation, a dephosphorylation, and binding of a small molecule. Now a second kinase comes out, and it phosphorylates the CDK in a different location. In fact, we'll explain it as we know this on a micro level. Turns out that the active site here is blocked by a loop of amino acids from one end of the protein. It covers up the active site just like closing a lid on it. So the substrate, the target proteins can't get in. The ATP is in the bottom of the active site, but the protein targets can't get in because the active site's blocked. Okay, so now, A specific kinase sticks a phosphate that will activate this. So now we have our cyclin. blocks the actosite, it's got lots of positive charges on it. So it's attracted and pulled to that phosphate. What that means is the actosite opens up, and now we're ready to rock and roll. At this point, our cyclic CDK combination is active. It goes out, phosphorylates all kinds of things, and then that starts mitosis. And the reason we have this multi-step activation is the last thing you want to do is activate mitosis when you don't want to. So you have multiple, in effect, arming steps, and you make sure that everything's in order before you finally fully arm our CDK and start mitosis. Otherwise, the results are disastrous. Trust me. Okay. <coughs> now, as we see one final thing of regulation, we'll touch on this when we come back on Tuesday, is at a certain point, the cyclin B is deliberately destroyed. 
That's at the, the just before anaphase starts. An enzyme complex destroys the cyclin B that shuts the CDK down, and then phosphatases reverse what the CDK did, and that pushes you into anaphase and telophase. And with that, that's our tied together example. Now, a couple people came in here just a little bit after we started.